Hey guys, it's Zach. If you wanna learn everything there is to know about Tesla's app for their Powerwall system, you're in the right spot. We're gonna do a full walkthrough to cover all the basics, as well as all those little things that most people don't recognize. I have made other videos with more in-depth tips and tricks that I'll refer to throughout this video. If you haven't already, check out those videos after this one and subscribe to the channel for more. Now, if you do need help registering your Powerwall system so it actually appears on your Tesla app, that is certainly step one, and I included a link from Tesla at the top of the description below on how to do that with the different Powerwall models. All right, so we're gonna start out on your home screen. As you log in, you're gonna see your house, you're gonna see the power flow going on. Up in the top left, you'll actually be able to see your Powerwall status. It's either gonna be in standby, discharging, charging, or off-grid. Standby isn't bad, I always get asked that. It just means that your battery's either fully charged, fully discharged down to that backup reserve, or it's just waiting to be used for peak hours if you are on that time-based control. You can also edit your home name by pressing and holding the name where it usually says my home up at the top left of the screen. On the front, you're gonna be able to view your home's live power flow. You're gonna have solar, home, power wall, and then the grid. You can also view the color-coded power flow of your home and see where the electricity is flowing. Green's gonna represent power wall, yellow is gonna represent solar, and then gray is gonna represent the grid or the utility. The numbers next to each section represent the total in KW or kilowatts. And this visualization is gonna show you if power's coming in or going out and just give you an idea of the overall flow. If you have a paired Tesla wall connector, which is their EV charger, it will show up on your home like here. And you can have up to two wall connectors shown on your house. To pair them to the home, you just have to go to add product up here on the screen and then follow the steps for the wall connector. Now, this app right here is for mobile devices only like your phone and your tablet. So if you want to view all of this data on your computer through the web browser, you're going to have to use NetZero's third party app. Go to the link right here that you see on the screen, log in with your Tesla credentials, and then you should be able to see all your systems information on your computer. On the homepage, you're going to have five primary sections. You're going to have energy, impact, settings, go off grid and support. Energy will show you your total kilowatt hours generated for the day. And then on impact, you're able to see your self-powered percentage for the day as well. Let's jump into the energy section. This is where you're able to get a view of all of your granular data and those energy metrics that you're looking for. You can view this data by clicking here where it says energy or from the home screen, you can just press on the solar panels to view the solar stats the power wall to view your power wall stats, you get the idea. Then you can just jump directly into whatever energy graph or energy section that you're looking for. At the top of the screen, when you're in the energy graph, you can see which section you're on, the name is gonna be right there. And then you can also toggle the different sections by selecting that correlating icon at the bottom of the screen. You're gonna have your home icon all the way to the far left, which shows your home's energy consumption. If you have a paired Tesla vehicle, you're gonna see a vehicle and that's gonna have all of your vehicle's energy stats. The power wall icons, going to have your power walls charge and discharge stats. The solar icon is going to have your solar generation. And then the grid in the bottom right side of the screen is going to have all of your grid imports and your exports. So basically energy going to the grid and coming from the grid, it's going to show you your overall grid dependence. Toward the top right, you can filter through any date range that you'd like, including a custom range. So you're not stuck with all of the presets. You can also swipe back and forth on the chart to view past days, months, years, and so on. I do find this most helpful when scrubbing through past days to see what happened on that day and the entire energy breakdown. If you long press and hold and then scrub on the screen, so drag your finger back and forth, left or right, you can actually scrub through all of this data and see what happened on any individual day, month, throughout the year, or even each individual five minute increment for that day. You can do this for any of the energy categories that we've discussed so far. So whether it's home, power wall, solar, you can view all of the little details that we're looking at right here. If you do click the three dots at the top right of the screen, you can also download the data for that date range and that energy category. And it's gonna download in a CSV spreadsheet, Excel type file. And then that way, if you're looking for something really specific, like I said, maybe a billing period, you can actually download download the data for that and then compare it against the numbers that you're looking at to see your actual metrics, your actual system performance. And it just, again, gives you more details if you're looking for something like that. This is probably most useful over
over a longer time range, like a month, a quarter, a year, or a lifetime. If you have a Tesla EV charger paired to the app, you can also see your EV charging history right here. So you have all of your past charging events, when they were, how long, and how much energy they used. On the charts right here, you will be able to put on a color filter on the data to see a quick breakdown of the energy splits. Again, green is for power wall, yellow is for solar, gray is for the grid, blue is for home, and then if you have a paired Tesla vehicle, red will represent the vehicle. Starting on home, you can see your home's energy consumption up in the top left and get a quick stat on the total kilowatt hours consumed. On this day view, you're also gonna be able to see a timeline from 12 a.m. until 11.59 p.m., giving you a full breakdown of what's happening when. The color splits here will be a breakdown of how much was used from the power wall, the solar, and then the grid. If you can't see these colors and it's just blue for whatever reason, just click that eyeball right here and it's gonna turn the filter on or off. You can also press power wall or solar or any of these and it'll highlight the data on the chart. All of these filters work the exact same on any of the energy categories and sections that we're talking about. Jumping into the power wall view, you can view your discharge and charge stats as well as when it's happening throughout the day. My favorite part of this graph is being able to see when my power wall system hits the backup reserve, which for me is 10%. And then when it hits 100%. So it gives you the exact time of when these events are happening. It just really gives you a good idea of your battery's charging and discharging patterns. On the solar chart, you can view your generation bell curve and all of the stats in terms of kilowatt hours generated for that date range. That's gonna be up there in the top left of the screen. Same as before, you can see the splits in terms of where that energy is going. Is it going to the home? Is it going to the power wall? Or is it being exported out to the grid? Solar is probably the chart that people will use the most frequently, especially when looking at their total generation for their system over a month or a year. On the grid section, you can view your energy imported or consumed from the grid and then the energy exported, which means energy sold back to the utility. You'll also be able to see when that's happening and then what your net usage was for that date range. It's gonna be right here in the middle part of the screen. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're able to see the cost of energy on the buy side, how much you pay to buy that electricity, and then also on the sell side, which is how much you get paid to sell it back to the utility throughout the day. Let's go back to the home screen and jump into the impact section. And if you are enjoying these videos so far, do me a huge favor, drop a like if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel for more. I really do appreciate it. Now in this impact section, there's some cool data, but it's more nice to know information rather than need to know information. I recommend switching the time frame up here in the top right section to anything but the day view. That way you're seeing these metrics right here like self-powered and savings on a little bit longer time horizon, I personally like the month view. You can see your self-powered percentage and how much of each power resource your consumption came from. The higher this percentage is, the better. It will also show you the projected savings based on your utilities rate plan that you set up. And then you're going to have your solar offset, which is all of your energy generated from your solar panels compared against all of the energy consumed from your home during this time frame. And at the bottom, you're gonna have all of your backup events, when the grid went out, how long they were, when they occurred, all of that information. So back to the home view we go, let's take a look at settings. And this is gonna be a simple version of settings. I'm not gonna walk you through all the nitty gritty of everything. If you wanna watch a more in-depth version of going through and setting up all of the settings within the Tesla app, please, please refer to a video I put together a few months ago. It's gonna be linked at the top of the description below. That is a very important video to watch, especially if you are new to your Tesla Powerwall system and you're just learning this app. So starting with settings and then Powerwall, right here at the top of the screen, let's talk about backup reserve. Now backup reserve is the energy reserve that you're gonna save for your Powerwall each day. Your battery will not discharge below this percent unless there's a grid outage. So do not make the mistake of setting this number too high unless you only want to use the power wall for outages. This is one of two major mistakes that I see homeowners make right here in this setting section that really kills their system performance. I recommend a 10 to 20% backup reserve unless you're really concerned with random power outages. If you are worried about outages and maybe you get more frequent outages than others, I do recommend airing a little bit on the higher side so that way you do have enough energy to get yourself through a a short evening until the sun comes back out and recharges your battery. If you want to use the most out of your battery each day, I recommend going lower. I keep it at 10%. 
but don't baby your battery. You bought it to use it, so do that. All right, now operational mode. This one's simple. Go with self-powered if you wanna prioritize energy independence and reducing your overall grid usage. Or if you just have one flat rate for electricity throughout the day, so you don't have any time of use rate plan and the cost of energy is the same no matter when you consume it. Now, time-based control is good for anyone on a time of use rate plan, so California, Arizona, Texas, several other states throughout the US, but you will wanna properly set up your rate plan accurately Otherwise, this isn't gonna work out well for you. We will talk about setting up your rate plan here in a second. Now, I mentioned I see two major mistakes made by homeowners on the app that kill system performance. And here is number two, permission to export. Turn it to yes. You need to mark permission to export on once you get permission to operate from your utility company. If you leave it in the no position, your system will only produce as much solar energy as the home or the battery can handle. But do keep in mind by marking yes, you do need utility approval to turn the system on to toggle this. So if you just got installed, you haven't gotten permission to operate from your utility yet, leave it in the no position, but do not forget to do this. Once you do get that permission to operate, flip it to yes. Again, I can't stress this enough, do not forget this step. So permission to export, yes. Grid charging, yes or no. If you're not sure, just mark it no. You might even have this disabled by your installer, depending on if it's allowed by your utility. And then automatic backup, select auto. If you have a paired Tesla vehicle under the vehicle charging right here under Powerwall, you can toggle on a few more settings. This one is the percent of energy shared um, from the power wall to the vehicle during a power outage only. I will post a screenshot somewhere here on the screen on what this info means exactly, but I like to save 95% of my energy from my home during an outage personally, so that's where I leave it at. On the bottom, you can also sync your Tesla vehicle to charge on solar as well, so this is where you can do it. You can also do it from the vehicle page. I have a whole nother video on charge on solar, so we won't dive into that here. Now, going back to power wall settings, let's see, Stormwatch. Now, now, Stormwatch is gonna trigger whenever there's a weather alert, like wind or thunderstorm or hurricane or whatever it is, and you can opt out of the event, you're gonna get a notification sent to the app, but when it gets triggered, it's going to prioritize your Powerwall state of charge, meaning it's gonna charge max capacity from either the solar or the grid or whatever's available to reach that 100%. It's preparing itself for a grid outage, however, there is one downside here, is if you are on a time of use rate plan, it's gonna override the peak times, meaning it might charge from the grid when the energy is the most expensive. So use it at your own risk, whether you toggle on or toggle it off, that's your call. You can also schedule a Stormwatch event in the app directly if you wanna manually trigger it yourself. I've done this before when I see that it's gonna be stormy the next day and I just wanna to top off the battery and ensure that I have some state of charge available. Now, utility rate plan right in here under Stormwatch, you're gonna to wanna to go in there and select your state and your utility and pick the correct rate plan that you're on, make sure it's correct. But there's a decent chance that your exact rate plan or your utility provider is not actually in the Tesla app. If that's the case, you will have to create a custom rate plan. Now, how to set up a custom rate plan is broken down 100% A to Z in that settings video that I mentioned earlier. Again, it's linked in the description below. Check it out if you need any help on setting up a custom rate plan. Now, I do offer a paid support call for anyone who needs one-on-one -on -one help or assistance with setting up the Tesla app, making sure all the settings are dialed in, and really just ensuring that the system is functioning like it should. I try to put as much free content as possible here on YouTube, so hopefully you guys don't even need that. But if that is of interest for you and it'd be useful, the link for that is in the description below. The big thing here to remember within this custom rate plan is when you're setting up your energy buy rate and your sell rate within the app is that this is all from your perspective. So how much you pay the utility company to buy electricity and then how much you receive from the utility company when you sell them electricity. So keep in mind, it's from your perspective, not from the utility's perspective. And then you have phone pairing. If you haven't done that already, go through that process. It's super simple. Wi-Fi, make sure your Wi-Fi is set up or for any reason your system goes offline or disconnects from the Wi-Fi, you can reconnect it there. Manage access, you can share your system to anyone like a friend or a family member as a guest so they can view everything that's going on. And then My Home Info has all of the information on your equipment, the serial numbers, all of those details can be found there. All right, back to the home screen and let's go off-grid. When you go off-grid, 
you do need to have your device paired. So if you haven't done that already, you'll need to go back into the settings, pair your device. It's gonna prompt you on how to do it. Like I said, it's really simple to do. Another thing I will also see is people will go off grid because they don't wanna use the utility, but don't do that, just go into self-powered mode. You don't have to go off grid. Off-grid is just a virtual simulation. It's fun to do, it's a cool little party trick, but it's not a mode that you guys should be using each and every day. And the main reason for this is when you go off-grid, your system won't export, it won't overproduce. Your solar panels will only generate enough electricity to either power your house or charge your battery. So if the battery's already charged, the solar's gonna be throttled down to only produce enough electricity to cover your needs, meaning it will not export back to the utility. So if you just wanna reduce your grid dependence and use less of the utility's electricity, don't go off grid, just put it in self-powered mode under the operating control. Now, when you go off grid or you have an actual grid outage, you're gonna get a notification sent to the app letting you know, hey, your home is off grid, there was a power outage. And then when you open up the app, you're gonna see it says top left, you're off grid. And then there's also gonna be a little red X or orange X right there in the middle of the screen, letting you know that you're disconnected from the utility. Additionally, you are able to view the projected remaining backup hours right up here in the top left. However, this does not factor any potential incoming solar energy that would recharge the battery. So it's likely longer than what's stated. When you do have a grid outage, you are able to see a power meter right here in the middle of the screen, letting you know how much power you're currently drawing. So that way you don't overload your power wall. If you overload your power wall, the power walls will shut off and essentially trip. If you do click on this power meter, it's also going to show you some of the best practices during an outage which basically just means use less electricity so your batteries last longer. When you are done, you can go ahead and reconnect to the grid and then it'll be back online within a few moments. The last section here at the bottom is support, which really does have a lot of different tutorials, manuals, and things like that. So there might be some helpful information in there for you as well. Now, if you wanna keep learning more, about how to maximize your Powerwall 3 experience, click on this video right here on the screen. There actually should be two of them. Pick which one you want. They're both pretty good. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk next time.